How many marathons have you run, first of all? 11 marathons. 11. Yeah. Of those 11, where would you say is the average distance where it really starts to hurt? Uh, where it starts to hurt is uh, the, the last two kilometers. Really? Yes. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely amazing for me. I'll to remember, eat it. the last two kilometers. This is not the norm. Do, do not judge the sport by Dennis oh my and Wilson. Gosh. Well, I, I guess that's why he had the. I guess that's why he had the world record. You know what I'm well, I think. I think what's interesting is, it, is, is maybe we need to ask Wilson as, as well. Jeffrey Mutai, the winner of the New York Marathon last year, said to me that you know, in that supposed distance to those of us that have run marathons talk about hitting the wall in the 30s. Um, Jeffrey told me that, you know, at around 35, 37 kilometers, he was this close to stepping out. And he ended up winning the thing. And I know that Wilson has a similar sort of story that, you know, late on in the race, he was hurting. He was, he was considering, like, okay, I've had enough. Yes. I think, uh, you know, that marathon is 42.2. And uh, where it at most is, you know, the last part, is when you are exhausted so much, the last two kilometers, and you are, suppo you are supposed to run fast. <laughs> but you can't. Yes, <laughs> but you find that if you try to see uh, many of my marathons, you find that I always try to run fast towards the end. But Wilson, you know, when in New York this year, I, I had the pleasure of being in the motorcycle sidecar uh, announcing the race for ESPN2 uh, and watched Wilson the entire way, not much farther, probably the same distance I am right now. And watching that battle, it turned into a two-man battle uh, over the Madison Avenue Bridge when you made your move at about 34K, 33K, and it became a two-man battle as Joffrey Mutai, the previous two-time champion, fell away, and Geber Geber Mariam, the Ethiopian, fell away, and it became Lalisa DeSisa, the 213 Boston champion right on your shoulder. Now both Dennis and Wilson are elegant runners, very efficient, just beautiful machines in uh, elegant motion. Lalisa DeSisa, you can make a smoothie if you had enough fruits and vegetables around him because he's all like a mix master out there. <laughs> was he, give, he was running also right inside your hip pocket. He was right, he, was, he wasn't just next to him. Was that giving you problems? Were you getting upset with DeCisa for running the, the way he did? You, you can be honest. Yeah, I think he, he was really giving me a lot of problems because uh, I always don't like somebody running from behind. I wanted him to run shoulder to shoulder so that I could really try to, to give a check, mm -hmm. try to see how he's running, try to see his moves, try to see how, he's, how more energy is, is, he got. But I think when somebody's running from behind, you, can, you, you can't just see him. And you don't know how he's planning, is he relaxed? Is he training? So it really gave me a lot of problems because, uh, but what assured me is that uh, I was really feeling very strong. And uh, I was really feeling that I wanted to, to, to have a proper calculation whereby if this guy is resting, I could have more energy to sprint. But if he was holding on, I would mm. really make sure that towards the end, he could have more, 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 more energy to sprint with me. In that race, in Central Park, the last uh, five kilometers or so, or, or last 4K, I think, rolling hills. And there was at least two or three occasions you really tried to break him. You, you really tried very hard, and you couldn't. Were you ever worried? Uh, I tried to, to, to break him, but I, when I saw him also trying to close the gap, I also knew that that was a, a game plan mm -hmm. because as he tries to close the gap, he's using more energy. When he closes the gap, I make sure that I maintain the pace high and make sure that I relax. When I tried to make the second move, he was also trying to close, but I knew that that kind of movement was really giving him a hard time. That is why he couldn't sprint towards the end. But he also never took the decision, never took the lead. He answered but he never, except the last 300 meters, 400 meters, 
He tried. One time, he was on the inside by the curb, and Wilson was, and they were very close, and you finally he dropped it into gear, and he tried to go by, and he is that mix master sort of form. He sort of hit your hip with his left hand, and then you just went back and look, looked at him. What and then you think? said something, and it was kind of like trash talking to the really? guy. Really? Wait a minute. Marathon no, trash no, talking? No, trash How did I you, miss no, no. my it was calling? like a disdainful. It was a disdainful. Who in the name of God are you? You think I'm going to do all the work? You did all the work. He just hung on and hung on, and you just looked at him imperiously from on high. Yes. What did you say to him? Yeah, first of all, I think uh, you know he, he surprised me a little bit because uh, from 35. To the last 300 meters, he was way back. He was just behind me, so I had really studied him from behind. That if this guy could have been strong, he could have one time maybe closed the cup and tried to mm -hmm. make a move. So he couldn't. Then I knew he was not strong anymore. But he just wanted to 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 to, to take a lift. But what did you say? What did but you say? But when he came towards my right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and try to, to, to really brush me a little bit and then try to, to run. And then I was trying to communicate to him, but I don't know what I heard it or... But what did you say? Because you I told him... Without the curse words. Yeah. <laughs> I told him that you have been running from behind, and yet if you try to see how I was, how, how I was running, you find that I was very close to the... The curb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there was lots of space from this other side. And then he was coming from... One side, the other yeah. side. Play so what did you say? And then I told this guy, you wanted to... He wanted to, it's like he wanted to cause a little bit this distraction so that I could maybe get distracted and then he could sprint. A lot of games. There was yeah, a lot, so a lot of games. That's why you saw I moved to this side and then now tried to have my own space and then I told him, okay, we can sprint. Otto's no never. What, <laughs> the 100 meter guys, when they. This is why we have these sort ahead. of conferences because not in a million years. Would I think that all of this is happening within the last, what, no, no, 400, 400 meters no, of a marathon? Let, let me just say this, Atra. I was at the race, um, and unfortunately, due to the exceptionally bad coverage, we missed 90% yeah. of I'm this. I'm the only one that saw it. So, so no, we saw the disdainful look and telling him to go on the other side because there's lots of room over there, which is actually what he said to him. And we saw that, but the, the coverage was actually pretty bad. So we missed the break and all of the above. So it's great to hear it. So yeah, yeah. Not all Kenyans can run. Okay, they have a population of... Well, not all of them can run as fast as these two. Yeah, but <laughs> you're looking at a population of 20, 30, 40, whatever million it is. Yes. Not all of them run. Not all of them are, are successful. We're talking about a pool of a million athletes. That's where the, the athletes come from. They come from an area in Iten. It comes from essentially two tribes. It comes from the Kikuyu and the Maraquets. And within the Maraquets... Is he right? Is he right? Or the yes. Nandis. Oh, ask the Nandi. Okay. Yeah, ask the Nandi. We, will, we will fact check you, you immediately. Can check, you can double okay. check me if you want. <laughs> and it's, it's essentially the Nandi tribe that has produced the most athletes. Okay, so I'm sure the other tribe would probably dispute that, but okay. They have been because you know, they've been doing some faction fighting, so we won't go into that. But essentially it's the Nandi tribe that has been the most successful in producing the athletes. So what I'm trying to illustrate is that you, know, you can throw it open, but ultimately there's the pool is where it's coming from. It's coming from a tent. You don't that often get athletes coming out of Nairobi. They're coming right. from up, up right. way. Yeah. And the only exception to that, there are always exceptions to the rule, yes. but the one exception to that rule is David Rudisha, who's a Maasai. Maasai, right. Mm -hmm. As was his father, who was on that 4x400 four team. Course. So just to kind of illustrate, and then you know, the athletes were asked you know, what we need to do in South Africa. I think it's an unfair question on them. You know, we need to find our, our, our strengths. You know, there are areas where traditionally we've produced athletes, and, and that's where we should focus.